Now for this next part, what we've got is this curve here, C, which is given by the parametric equations x equals tan theta and y equals 2 sine 2 theta for theta between naught and pi upon 2. And we've got this shaded area s going from x is naught to x is 1 over root 3. And this area is spun through 2 pi radians, the equivalent to 360 degrees then, about the x-axis and we've got to show that the volume of revolution about the x-axis is given by this integral where k is a constant. So how do we go about doing a problem like this? Well first of all we should be familiar with the fact that if you want to find the volume of revolution about the x-axis the volume let's say v is always equal to pi times the integral of y squared integrated with respect to x where you've got limits, x limits here, x going from in this case naught to 1 over root 3. So if we just put that in there, x going from naught to 1 over root 3. So this is a formula that you should be familiar with. Now We've got parametric equations though, so we need to do some substitutions in here. So we can see immediately that this is equal to pi times the integral of y squared, and y is 2 sine 2 theta. So I've got to square that, okay, so I'll just put that in brackets, 2 sine 2 theta for y, but that is squared. Now for dx, we get round this problem now that we're changing it to this new variable theta. We get round this problem by saying this is exactly the same as dx by d theta integrated with respect to theta. It's as if these two cancel out, just leaving me with exactly the same value there, dx. But because I'm integrating now with respect to theta, I need to change these limits. These limits here are originally in terms of x. Now we've got to change it in terms of theta. And to do that, we turn to where x is connected to theta, and that's this part here. So if I was to just come down through here, let's just border this off, then what we're saying is that we know that x equals tan theta. So when we take the lower limit when x is 0, so we'll just say when x equals 0, that leaves us with tan of theta equals 0. And theta would be the inverse tan of 0, and that turns out to be 0. 0 radian, so we can pop that in there. Now we need to get the upper limit for theta when x is 1 over root 3. So again we'll do this when x equals 1 over root 3. Then what we've got is that therefore the tan of theta equals 1 over root 3. And to get what theta is we need to take the inverse tan of both sides. So therefore theta equals the inverse tan of 1 over root 3. And you've got to remember to be in radians mode. If you're in degrees mode the inverse tan would be 30 degrees. And for radians that's the equivalent of pi over 6. So we'll keep it as pi over 6. So that needs to go in up the top here, so that's pi over 6. So that's how we're getting our limits now, naught to pi upon 6. We also need dx by d theta. So we'll do that as well. Whilst we're here, we can say also dx by d theta. Let's just put it down here. If we differentiate x, which equals tan theta with respect to theta, then differential tan theta is sec squared theta. The equivalent of 1 over cos squared theta, so we can think of that as 1 over cos squared theta. So when we come to substitute this in here, we've got 
pi times 2 squared, that's going to be 4. So we could put the 4 out the front. We've got 4 pi then, multiplied by the integral going from 0 then to pi upon 6 of sine squared 2 theta. Now, I know that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta. Again, you should be familiar with that expansion for sine of 2 theta. So remember, I've taken the 2 out, I've squared it, that gives me that 4 here. And sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, but I need to square that. Now we've got to multiply it by dx by d theta, so we've got to times this with 1 over cos squared theta. So I could write 1 over cos squared theta here, but this times 1 is just going to be this that you see, so I'm just going to put cos squared theta underneath. Okay, and then we've got the d theta here. Now let's just expand this bracket. If we expand the bracket, we've got 2 squared, okay, which is 4. 4 times the 4 there is going to be 16 pi. Then we've got our integral from 0 to pi upon 6. And then we've already taken the 2 and squared it. So we're left with sine squared theta, cos squared theta. So we've got sine squared theta, cos squared theta. And that's all over cos squared theta here and we integrate that with respect to theta. So can you see we've got the cos squared thetas now cancel because they're common factors. So what we end up with is that this equals 16 pi times the integral from naught to pi upon 6 sine squared theta d theta. And that's the thing that we had to show. We had to show that it was identical to this. And if we were asked to find out what the constant k was, then it would be clearly 16 pi. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea then how to go about that question.